All right. So the last episode ended with join the gratitude DAO, um, which is good subliminal messaging. It's a good way to end the last one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you want to be a facilitator, if you want to offer a space, then you can join the DAO and you can earn some gratitude tokens from the DAO for holding these roles. Um, this is also, you know, a big part. One of the things that really, really inspired me in Seeds is this idea that we can redesign an economy to actually serve us. And one of the big examples that always got to me was healers, because so many healers, myself included, feel and felt weird, you know, asking for money for that thing, because it is so deeply beautiful. It's like, same thing with, you know, a sexual act, you know, like, are you a prostitute, which is fine if that's what you do with your life, but it's like, do we need to do that? It feels differently for people who aren't, you know, wanting to feel that way. And then there's course after course of like how to change your relationship with money and like get over that block that you have. And instead, it's like, why are we changing ourselves when our intuitive sense inside of us says this doesn't feel right? Why do we need to change ourselves for money? Because some economy that some dudes, you know, centuries and thousands of years ago made up, you know, <laughs> like, what, 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 what does that make sense anymore? No. So like, why don't we change our economy so that healers were getting, you know, compensated for their awesome gift they're giving communities without having to actually ask for money. So, you know, that's where this concept of having roles in your community really comes from is then you can have the healer role, which is what we're starting right here is you can come and get a role in the gratitude DAO. Um, what are gratitude tokens? We don't know yet. That's part of our job once we join the DAO to figure out. But either way, hopefully this evolves into communities where you have healer roles where people are just getting paid, you know, basically getting a UBI to then go freely heal without having to. So you you're know, saying money in the money in the refi world is consensual. That uh, everyone's agreeing to consensual money. Yeah, consensual money. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, if we're making up our own money, then it is consensual, right? And now it's not, you know, some central bank somewhere, you know, screwing you. Now it's us having consensual relationships with how we want to track and contribute into communities yeah. together and organize. Um, and if money is no longer serving us, great, because that's the last slide I wanted to show you and get into, which is this is really what we're doing here. Um, we're shifting paradigms. So that's kind of the real goal. And I'll explain this a little bit more. You know, one paradigm, which is the one we're all coming from, is a paradigm of unconditional trauma. Uh, I think it's a situation where no matter who you are, how wealthy you are, what part of the world you're coming from, you're born with a substantial amount of trauma just for being part of the civilization. Um, so it's kind of really, you know, kind of that way that everyone's traumatized, uh, some, of course, more than others. But that's kind of the, the current dominant paradigm is one of trauma, which is where the healing circles really come in. And of course, what we all know we're moving into is a dominant paradigm of unconditional love. Um, at least that's where some people are wanting to build their civilizations towards. So that's kind of like, what is the, the other side? It's an unconditional love paradigm. And a really quick mm -hmm. test I have for this that I, you know, is something interesting to think about is that how many times during your day is it okay for you to just blurt out, I love you? You know, mm -hmm. and, and not only is that just, okay, it's neutral. Like I can do it right now. I love you. And I do. I, you're an awesome yep. human. Yeah, it feels <laughs> neutral to say it right now, <laughs> but you know, and there's so many cases in so much of the old culture where that's just completely inappropriate to say that, right? So I think that's yes. kind of recognizing, you know, recognizing when you're living in one paradigm is like, is it appropriate to just blurt out, I love you right now? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I it love is. you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The ono practice from Hawaii is uh, an expression of healing unconditional love. Mm. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So those are both huge lists. Yeah, we're definitely not going to get into it now. Um, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe just for, actually, maybe we do. What do you think? Do you want to? I think we can maybe do a quick read of them and, and touch on anything that is 
that comes up. Um, so essentially you're illustrating the contrast between where we have been and where we want to go. What this circle is evolving into? Um, hopefully, yes. And of course, this is a map and every map is false, uh, especially this one because it's just coming together right now and its intention is for us to kind of create it and work on it. So it's just, you know, putting us out there and getting us started. Um, so yeah, we're, we're leaving one paradigm. We're moving to another one. One of unconditional trauma, one to love, you know, one where, you know, there's a wounded patriarchy, you know, expressing a lot of extra control of the world, causing a lot of that trauma, right? Uh, and then there's, of course, the one where that masculine and feminine is balanced and we're being intrinsically guided to create instead of, you know, extrinsic control. You don't need an economy exerting force on you. You don't need a civilization exerting threat of violence in order to coerce humans to, you know, do productive things. But uh, instead, the passion comes from like a drive inside, like every cell of your being is like calling you to answer. <laughs> mm intrinsically guided that's a great one and that comes so easily when you're in unconditional love it's really blocked mm -hmm. it's not there right so then when that love's not there we believe this story because that intrinsically guided drive is not functioning properly right uh we have a current reality where we have a shrinking diversity of economies. So we have colonialism kind of running across the world, you know, taking over civilizations and knocking them out. So we've been having a shrinking diversity of economies, just like we have a shrinking diversity of species on our planet. Um, the regenerative mm -hmm. paradigm is flipping that switch again. So, you know, seeds isn't, and this whole movement isn't, we know the way, and this is what it looks like. It's, you know, we're forking, we've, we've got to explore, we've got to run experiments. You know, there's going to be a million different ways, and that's the point. Um, so that's really where this is also headed, is it's growing the diversity of realities and different economies, right? Right. Come come with us and find your passion and share, like, and contribute your gifts and talents that naturally come to you. That's, yeah, another call. Um, another Another quest to be accepted. Well, and that's the other real point of the healing circles is if you don't know your calling, if you don't know your purpose, then that might be one of the first things to heal. Mm. That might be, and that's really how I also see, I'm hoping, I'm trying this in the current bioregenerate, is that we start with the healing circles to figure out what our roles are. So it might be like, oh, you know, I was a lawyer because... You know, I believed that I was going to meet my need for love if I accomplished a bunch of things. And so I thought lawyers would give me a bunch of accomplishment or whatever it is, right? Um, so whatever your old yeah. world of the beliefs, then you start this journey. You're like, actually, I really love growing plants. I love talking to them and connecting with them. I love being outside. Like I actually would love the role of being a, you know, bioregional steward and to just go and create food forests everywhere. You know, I, I didn't know I loved that, but now that I know that exists, I actually think that's what I really would love to do, you know, <laughs> or, you know, whatever that shift is. So then the the role that you play in your bioregion region for how you meet everyone else's needs for thrivability. Yeah. That healing journey as well. It might be, oh, you know, I actually found out I'm a healer. Great. And then the thing, and the beautiful thing is the thing that you're intrinsically guided to do is the thing that's going to best benefit everyone else on this planet and everything else on this planet. So if we really design an economy around what we're intrinsically guided to bring to the world, like that's going to be the most beautiful thing. <laughs> so like, you know? Yeah. I'm still not settled on the word healing, but the more I hear you talk about it, I understand why you chose that word first over like a being or holding or witnessing or sharing. Oh. It's going to need stages i think to work up to being a full like healing circle we're gonna have to do it in increments and build um build that momentum it's it's almost like a, a place to come and get like self-realized or get yeah okay well, for us to collectively self-realize yeah and showing up with that intention and we're calling it healing then it will be 
So there mm -hmm. is a reason for calling it that because that's what we're creating. And if we all agree that that's what we're creating, then that's what we'll create. Uh, the other reason for calling it that is because that's the point that so in today's, you know, corporate world, it's, oh, you know, that trauma you're dealing with, that sadness you have, you know, you leave that stuff at home, like here is for business. And, you know, for better, or for worse, Haitha also took that mentality. And that's fine. You know, they survived, which maybe they might not have if they didn't. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Uh, point is, is that mentality could be pervasive if it's not very clear that that is the point. So the point isn't to, you know, shirk off those traumas like, oh, that's a conflict. That's something to avoid because it's reducing productivity. Instead, mm -hmm. hey, that's a conflict. Awesome. Because conflicts are kind of the point here. And that helps us see where our next stage of healing is. So now instead of conflicts and communities being something to avoid and try to, you know, shy away from, now it's like we're playing a game and that's the next boss and that's literally the point and that's why we're here so it's fun and now we're taking it on together and it's like okay you got triggered you know why did you get triggered why did i get triggered and my wife and i have been doing this the last couple of months and we freaking love it <laughs> um so this is why it's also excited here is we've been able to shift it before it was like ah, oh, no i got triggered again now i'm mad at her and whatever now it's like, okay, we get triggered and we can both have that conscious awareness to say, okay, you got triggered. Why? And we step out of the emotion where we're, you know, angry at the other person or whatever. And we realize that it is a trigger connected to some wound that we have that's offering us an invitation to go heal it. So another reason for calling it healing is again, that's kind of the point is for us to say that when those wounds come up, those traumas come up, we don't try to shy away from them because we're not trying to be productive, you know, necessarily. Um, although we'll end up being more productive this way, I'm sure. Does that, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that it speaks to an aspect of my life that I've been looking to co-create as well. It's like a community that is willing to walk into some of the or even just walk the mountain of humanity and um i've been using the term like tilling the soil of the inner mud um and i i would be so thrilled and you know just like i was calling out people before or in the discord channel you know if you really want something you got to show up and make it happen and i feel like this is what the universe is showing me here it's like i've been asking for that safe place where i can be who i really am and you know if i i slip into the worst of it that i'm not you know kicked out i'm not abandoned i'm not like shut down and like you're wrong and disgusting and get out it's it's more like wow, I've witnessed you. Yeah, I feel your anger or whatever it is coming up. And, um, you know, to be held in that space, to let me have my emotions for a moment. And then like even the reflection of like how to, how to, how to move that, how to move into the next, like, yeah, you, you process that. Now let's, let's go do some breath work and like, clear it from the from the body like yeah now it's like out of the nervous system and okay and then all of a sudden it's like I, there's room for creativity to click in so mm -hmm. yeah like mm. I feel it I feel it Reiki but <laughs> but my own my own fear shame and guilt you know on your one side of your bridge there I it's it's still there uh and yeah the the trusting of community is a huge challenge for me and maybe others so i think that's why i'm welcoming the the small incremental steps is cuz you start with um what was it the practicing of perfecting trust with each other and practicing perfecting love with each other mm. with the goal is to be present with each other mm. and eric from uh ufhd pointed out to me that so trust is in time 
love is in space and the presence is in spirit so it's like you know once you establish like your time space coordinates like where you are as a body a mind emotion you know feeling spiritual being like once you establish your own source healing connection then then you branch out into yeah like you said the, the witnessing and listening I think a lot of us are really, for myself included, learning, relearning how to really listen. Um, and so the need for these circles that you are creating or that you've been. Um, I'm just Matt May. Fired. Yeah, just inspired. Potentially space holding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a bit of a lamplighter. They, I hear this term in some of the roles. You come and start the little light in the room and then wait for others to gather and be like, hey, what is that over there? <laughs> um, yeah. So it's got some really beautiful like world bridging that's happening. And it also will have a nature of its own once you unleash this into the world right like the the one question i do have for you unless you have any comments um on that last little bit no is just in the the to clarify like this gamifying of gratitude and i can see the application of taking like the energetic exchange of gratitude and making space for it in the digital world so that there is a way to like not only track gratitude, but it like a, a, it's a new practice of like learning how to like observe from the lens of gratitude. But what is the difference between a gratitude token and like a social credit? Um, before I just quickly answer that, I'm going to answer that in a long way. <laughs> <laughs> um, first thing I want to say is I want to finish this actually because it, the question you just asked was huge and you know because we're talking about still creating financial systems still using our cell phones to still access blockchain technology you know you know it's still part of like a very artificial technological world you know and a lot of people are sensing and it's probably very likely true that the emerging paradigm doesn't require and probably never has all this artificial technology that is dead and short norm is there's doesn't matter too deep on one side so when we're building seeds and we're building new financial systems we're really connected with the existing paradigm so it's really been the goal of seeds is to build this bridge one that is still connected and can communicate with capitalism etc because when people have said, hey, we don't like this paradigm, we want to leave to a new one, and they just do that without support, there's like an 80 plus percent, I mean, 80 percent is being fair. Um, it's much higher than that failure rate of trying to create a new type of story, right? Um, and even to take that chance is an incredibly privileged position to even try. <laughs> so that's really been our role for this whole entire journey is how do we ease that process? How do we create a bridge where we can create these new paradigms? Um, so when seeds got started, it's like the foundation on one side of the paradigm, right? And a foundation on its own, you can imagine if the bridge was cut in half and it stopped halfway, you know, um, it's just an extension of the old paradigm. It doesn't actually get us anywhere. So the bridge is only important when it really connects with the other side. And this is where we've been moving with region civics and so much else happening in seeds in our movement, where there's actual projects of people on the ground in bioregions living and operating different ways. And this is really where I think the, the next stage of our journey and seeds and beyond is really projected, um, is what are these things look like? And then how do we then make that bridge? So this is the alliance that's been forming over the many, many years now, but getting much more traction is all the different types of tools and everything that's needed to make that bridge. So anyway, when we talk about gratitude, it's fully existing here. It's still connecting us to the old paradigm because we're still trying to answer the question, you know, how do we fund our movements? You know, how do we bring in large financial capital to be able to buy up more land, to be able to support land projects, to be able to help people, you know, with that transition because dollars are still helpful, et cetera. 
So he still mm-hmm. needed an intermediary to talk to those old systems, but that's still, you know, that's the infrastructure on the left side. It doesn't have to be on the right. And the right side, the new land projects and the new communities doing stuff, they could be way beyond capitalism. Maybe they don't even have money. They're beyond that concept, you know? So this is, I, I really want to ground that, that the work we're doing with Gratitude Token is really grounded here, you know, the foundations on the old paradigm where gratitude itself exists, you know, on the other side without a token. Um, okay, so what's the difference between a gratitude token itself and like a social credit? So how gratitude tokens work is at the start of each cycle, you're given some tokens and we get to design this. Everything I share right now is up for tweaking. So the gratitude DAO is going to be able to make edits to this as we learn. And, you know, as we keep wanting to, it's our game. We get to evolve it. (laughs) That's the fun part. Let me bring this. Okay. So yeah, everything I'm going to share is up for exchange or up for um, evolution. So at the start of every cycle, you're given some tokens. It could be 200 tokens or 100 tokens, which is the current numbers. If you're a citizen in seeds, you get 200. If you're a resident, you get 100. If you're neither, you get none. Um, So it is a way of making sure we have some civil resistance because that's one of the other reasons for having the resident and citizen process is to make sure you are a human, that you're not a robot. So you have to have other humans say, yep, they're human in order to have your resident account. So that's really the function of it primarily is to make sure you're a human. Okay, so when we do know you're a human, we're gonna give you some tokens. When you reach citizenship, which we're gonna to have to completely redesign what this means in seeds, so this is something else for us to kind of rethink, is what does it mean to move from a resident to a citizen? Um, and I think it might be somewhere along that healing journey, who knows, we'll figure this one out as a community. But when you do reach that level, then you have more influence. So now you have 200 tokens. Okay, so you get these tokens at the start of each cycle. If you don't use them, it doesn't matter because you're reset to 200 at the start of next cycle. And cycles are lunar calendars, so every new moon, right? Um, So you can send these tokens. But they only have value when you give them away. Exactly. They mean nothing holding on to them. And it's like real gratitude. You know, and this is what we're Mm -hmm. trying to emulate. We're trying to emulate like a hug. You know, when I hug you, you release serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, you feel fantastic and you get your love hormone cocktail released in your body. So do I. If I don't give you that gratitude and hug, I don't get that cocktail either. <laughs> so, so we're trying to design an economic system that's self-rewarding on both sides. So you actually earn tokens, you'll earn seeds if you send your gratitude. So if you don't use them, you don't get re- any reward. If you do spend them, you actually get paid. So anyway. So you send all your gratitude tokens. So now you have this token to spend that if you don't use it, you'll lose it. If you use it, it's actually good for you. So use it, recognize people, be grateful, share it. And how it actually works is you go into Discord right now and you click exclamation point, acknowledge, A-C-K, and you say something to someone. You say, I acknowledge Natalie for being a fantastic facilitator. You know, and that will send them gratitude tokens. Yep. Okay. I acknowledge the cycle, for sharing see... his truth. Say again? <laughs> I was just like, I acknowledge Reiki for sharing his truth. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm actually going to put this in Discord, you know? send you some gratitude. Um, <laughs> so then everyone has this thing to acknowledge other people for, right? So that's the main function. And then at the end of the cycle, we see who got gratitude, where it all flowed. And then they get a proportion of the pool of seeds, which is the currency of our economy, right? Um, for how many yeah. gratitudes they received, right? And there could be other multipliers and things we can start adding when we want to start changing this. But the real you know, quest for us here in our game is how do we acknowledge people who are showing up to our movement, doing beautiful things to serve the Renaissance and this you know, transition that we're a part of without them having to go through this formal role process and put up a proposal and get it passed and all these other things to earn tokens. So there is still that process for people who want, you know, a full-time role or really to get involved more concretely. There are still roles in the whole DAO process, right? But this was like, how can people show up, join a call, recognize each other, grow together, still distribute seeds in our economy and et cetera. So this is really how do we like fully decentralize the process of recognizing who's contributing what and distributing a currency throughout an economy. Um, so that's kind of the what we're trying to experiment and explore here. Hmm. Um, Do the facilitators or contributors to the circle have to come 
from, I don't know if you just said that, if do they have to come from within the seeds economy? Is it specific or is there like outdoor, outer, outsourced um, facilitators or like I know um, lots of different healers that could offer beautiful things, but I don't, I don't understand this boundary of in and out of seeds. Seeds was designed to be fully decentralized, like people just show up. So, you know, yeah, okay. if they want to okay. be part of the DAO, they do need an invite because they need a wallet in order to actually access the DAO. So someone will invite them to seeds, you, if you want to invite them to be a healer. So how the process would look, look, I'll just walk us all through it, is you'd invite them to the wallet. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, you can watch the how to invite someone to the seeds video. But anyway, after they got an invite, then they can go to the gratitude DAO. So type in gratitude. No, that didn't work. Let me search it then. Ah, oh, it's DH. Oh. Anyway, so you can go to the gratitude DAO. And if you're not a member, you'll have a button up here that says join and become a member. And then we'll start letting people in and we'll start having uh, weekly or monthly calls. We'll put an announcement in the Seeds Discord on the frequency. And when we're going to have the first Gratitude DAO um, held session will be the day after the upcoming solstice. So I think it'll be like the 23rd. We'll have our first meeting, but I'll put that announcement with the video when you share it. Okay, so then when you come here, you'll apply and then... This is how we're going to evolve our DAO. So right now there's nothing. Uh, I have a staged proposal up for uh, space holding and healing facilitators. This is what we talked about. If you want to be holding circles, then you would apply for this role. But right now this role doesn't even exist. So I just have it up for comments. So anyone who wants to join this DAO right now, it's pretty open. If you're watching this video, I assume you're pretty connected with the community. So if you're, if you're watching this, you know, just come here and apply. Um, start giving your feedback and let's evolve this together. Um, so it is the start it with the intention of, you know, how do we have meetings that are medicine, heal together, witness each other on that journey, recognize each other for contributing, um, which is how I want to kind of close all of this out is you see all these DAOs now, right? I'm, I'm part of a bunch of DAOs. It's so much fun. Um, but anyway, we'll go back to explore. All of these are coming out of seeds or not all of them. A lot of these have come out of seeds. Um, certainly a lot have come from everywhere else, but like even the first one, right? So most of these are seeds. Um, there's so many different DAOs for you to come and join and be a part of. So when you start going on this journey and you're like, great, I love these people. I want to keep creating. I want to start getting recognized for my contributions, which is where seeds kind of collapsed before is we were growing pretty rapidly, but we didn't have any of these tools. So we had Haifa, which was a group that did have something like this that was recognizing contributions, but there's so many other humans that were showing up in so many different capacities that weren't getting recognized. And that just wasn't freaking fair. <laughs> So we kind of, that was one of the reasons we entered a winter season and we just stopped the growth and we shut it kind of all down was it wasn't fair for more people to keep showing up, putting in their time, opening up their heart and everything and not being recognized to the same capacity others were. So it's mm -hmm. also kind of the intention behind that gratitude circles is um, to recognize everyone. <laughs> like that's a space that anyone who's contributing can really show up, earn a bunch of gratitude and it's completely decentralized. It's the community deciding who's showing up by who they're sending gratitude to. So now it isn't this central organization that's kind of dictating who and what gets value, which is what we had before, where we had a life of DAO, where there was a few people with a lot of voice, myself included, um, that had a lot of sway in what got passed. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't part of the vision to begin with. That's just a technical limitation. And we always dreamed that we'd have these tools and now we have them. So now I think it's appropriate to start growing again because we'll have the gratitude circles to recognize your contributions, or you can show up to a DAO and dive in more, um, which is also where we have the Seeds Collaboratory right here. Um, so maybe I'll yes. pass this back to you, Natalie, and you can talk more about the <laughs> collaboratory, unless you have any more questions on the gratitude circles. No, thank you very much for um, walking us through that. And yeah, I'm feeling complete on that. Welcome to the Seeds Collaboratory DAO. Um, I think I'm we'll be speaking with Alexandra shortly and we're going to discuss, have okay. a, a nice conversation over like where we've been with the DAO and where we're going. And 
right now we are still flipping compost, but we have, uh, you know, the economic and deployment circle are um, leading the way in terms of like developing a structure and formation government governance had their official first inaugural um, meeting today, even though governance has technically been kind of happening since always, there's always a under like a relationship of governance in, you know, um, defining all that w we do. And um, yeah, the Constitutional Council, Stewardship Council and Strategy Council are just starting to, um, you know, come onto the horizon, link into consciousness and, you know, ask the question, you know, like, who am I? <laughs> what am I doing here? And so, yeah, it's it, this is the time that we are welcoming new energy, people with inspiration that are ready to answer the call and um, fulfill the quest of bridging worlds and, you know, cultivating that new potential for, um, yeah, for the, just the, like the conscious co-creating that, uh, that we're weaving into. And yeah, so I think it's an exciting time. It's ever changing. Mm. Ever changing, uh, no doubt. Exciting always. Um, <laughs> crazy and chaotic, um, certainly. Um, however, it can, it can be, but it has its routines as well. You know, there's regular meetings and there's a general, a uh, few that continue to show up. Um, and so, yeah, there's some regularity to pieces of it, but, um, the evolution of it is we've really been leaning into the fact that it is of its own nature now, like it has, it's it's becoming its own entity and we need to respect that and follow the nature of like the collaboratory, this new ecosystem that we're entering and welcoming in so much diversity and how to, you know, consider all the different components. It's uh, an interesting dance. Yep. Um, so I want to make this really bullet point style of how you might be able to show up. So if you are just minorly interested, uh, you want to be part of this healing, then you can start showing up to some of the healing circles uh, and then participate in that gratitude. So gratitude works two ways, just to double down on this. You can acknowledge other people for things they've done, or you can shine light on yourself. You got to get really good at doing that too, because our old culture said to not do that because it's selfish or whatever. Like, no, if you're doing things, please share them. <laughs> Otherwise, how are we going to give you gratitude? Um, so then that's it. You can start doing things. You know, and this could be anything for the Renaissance. So just have fun with it. Um, show up to these circles and participate that way. Um, or you can come and join one of these DAOs. And each DAO has their own Discord. So generally the process is you can hop into that Discord, say hello. Um, all the DAOs that I'm a part of, dues, whatever you want to call them, um, are really self-organized. So it does take someone to want to really be engaged <laughs> to move things forward. And that's okay, because everyone I talk to wants that too. So please don't feel shy, you know, go in there, say what you would like, you know, join the DAO, you know, kind of move things along if that's what you would like. Um, and I think most groups are pretty receptive to that. Um, that's my opinion. I could be totally wrong there. And maybe Natalie, you can offer a different perspective. Yeah, so that's two easy ways to get involved. And now I want to hear you reflect. <laughs> oh, I was waiting. Is there like a high level? I guess uh, that's that's where you like come into the the DAO and apply to be a facilitator in the healing gratitude circle. And definitely that. Like, um... are we? Are you? I would put out a call for specifically for you know the, the artists the healer the contributors that want to create um, and are really passionate like it's part of their calling to create containers and they have a lot of awareness around all of the weird human stuff that can show up and how to um, be able to um, create boundaries and safety 
within an online, you know, global exchange. Um, mm. Yeah, that that. I love that. That's probably one of the first uh, things that the Gratitude DAO might do. Actually, is generate a video amongst. You know, I'd, I'd like to see it be all the first members of the DAO. So maybe it might be ten or thirteen or however many people kind of doing an invitation or something like that. Um, oh yeah, I love that idea to get more of the healers involved and have a space for them to show up. So if you're a healer and you're listening to this, there's another place. Um, but there's DAOs kind of popping up the whole ecosystem. So real quick, there is the do tell. So that's the storytelling side. So if you want to be part of telling the story, they're the ones that put out the newsletter. Awesome humans. If you want to be part of creating with them, there's that side. Um, there's Regen Civics. And Regen Civics is how do we take all these tools and actually apply them to land projects? So, you know, eco villages, startup villages, startup economies, bioregional DAOs, all that fun stuff is kind of happening under Regen Civics and an alliance of projects. So if you have a tool that's part of this renaissance, Region Civics Alliance might be a place for you because that's basically an alliance where all the different tools and projects out there that are helping other people on the ground make this transition. So if you're an organization or a group helping those transition into new types of economies and civilizations, um, then you can join this alliance and then be part of an alliance of organizations helping groups. And then we're fundraising together and we're coordinating together. We're helping projects together and all that stuff. Um, so that's the Region Civic side. There's the Haifa side, which is building that DAO tool I just showed you, the wallets and et cetera. So if you love building and getting into that side of things and creating the technology, Haifa is kind of the place for you there um, or a place that you can show up. There's a bunch of other tools being built too that could probably use your help as well. Um, there's local scale and local scale is a tool for setting up your bioregional economies. So this has a marketplace where you can do, you know, share housing, you can set up your farmer's markets there, and there's so many different things. And you can create your own local currencies and exchange them online, and there's a whole world of building your bioregional economy with local scale. Um, I'm probably missing a whole bunch, but Natalie, maybe you can round it off. <laughs> if you have any others. Yeah. Uh, any other DAOs? Not off the top of my head. I know there are so many, and uh, I know I'm also reaching my max for um, EMF exposure here. Um, running into the evening. It smells so beautiful, but uh, that's all I can think about right now. <laughs> well, then maybe we can be wrapping this up because we're coming to the last minutes anyway. Um, so anything else on your mind or anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you and I appreciate this, uh, giant chaotic growing ecosystem that is seeds. Um, I know, um, nobody really knows exactly what's going on. Well, where we're going or you know what's to expect but being part of this community is hopeful for me and yeah i'm gonna continue to show up as long as i can maintain attention and focus and contribute from a place of um you know authenticity and wholeness so i put that out there for um for others i think it's it's time to come out of hiding to take off your winter and uh take that chance of showing up and contributing and see what comes out of it you'll be so delightfully surprised at the right connections forming at the right moment. That's the other thing I've noticed of seeds. It's like, I don't know why I'm here, but then all of a sudden this person and this synchronicity and wow, I've wanted to do that. And someone's already doing it. Amazing. It's a good feeling. So I recommend taking the plunge and um, building those connections.